Hi everyone, hope you're well. In today's video we're going to talk about something that you might have encountered while browsing the web. The 401 error. So have you ever seen a message saying unauthorized when you're trying to access a website or an API? When this video will uncover what the 401 error is all about. We'll explain why it happens, what it means, and most importantly, how to deal with it. Whether you're a developer or just curious about the web, this video is perfect for you. So let's jump right in. So what are 401 errors? A 401 error, also known as unauthorized or authorized required, is an HTTP sat status code that indicates that client's lack request lacks valid authentication credentials for the requested resource. Whenever a server returns a 401 error, it means that the client needs to provide valid creden credentials like a username or a password or an authentication token to access that requested resource. This error is commonly encountered when trying to access restricted web pages um, or APIs or other protected resources that require authentication. When you have your 401 error, the client typically prompts the user to provide necessary credentials or initiates a redirection to an authentication page. Once the credentials are provided and successfully authenticated, the client can resend the request with the proper authentication details, typically in the form of an authorization header. It's worth noting that a 401 error is different from a 403 error, which means forbidden, while a 401 error implies that the client lacks valid authentication credentials for the requested resource, and a 403 error is known as forbidden, meaning that the client has valid authentication credentials, but it's still not granted access to the requested resource. So unlike a 401 error, a 403 indicates that the server understands the client's request and has authenticated them su successfully, but the server refuses to fulfill the request due to insufficient permissions. Um, and this could be due to access restrictions, permission settings, or other auth authorization related factors. The server explicitly denies and returns a 403 status code to notify the client. So in summary, a 401 error signif signifies a lack of authentication, while a 403 error represents a lack of authorization despite being authenticated successfully. So when a server returns a 401 error, there's different ways to how, to, uh, how you can typically deal with it, but you need to address the issue of the authentication. So here are some steps you can take to handle 401 errors. Ensure that you are providing valid and correct credentials, such as your username, password, or authentication token, depending on the authentication method you using by the server. If you think that your credentials are correct, double check that you are sending them properly. So for example, if you're using HTTP basic authentication, ensure that the credentials are included in the request headers in the appropriate format. Uh, some systems or APIs may require you to obtain fresh or renewed credentials, periodically, so if your credentials have expired, follow the necessary steps to acquire updated ones. Understanding the required authentication me method used by the server or API, um, so like it could be basic authentication, uh, API keys or other me mechanisms, make sure that you're using the correct method and following the sp any specific authentication protocol that's actually required. When you receive a 401 error, your application should gracefully handle the error message response. So you should you want to prompt the user to provide valid credentials or display appropriate error messages and guide them through the authentication process. And if you're working with a specific API or system, consult the documentation for guidance on handling 401 errors. If necessary, reach out to the API provider or system admin for support or clarification on authentic authentication requirements. Remember that 401 errors indicate authentication issues and addressing them involves ensuring valid credentials, proper authentication methods and appropriate error handling in your application as well. So that's basically it. Thank you very much for joining me today and being a part of this video. I hope you find the content informative and enjoyable. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to stay updated with more engaging content just like this. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And finally, if you want to support the channel further, don't hesitate to share this video with your friends and on your any uh, platforms as well. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.